thanks to uh, BMW Cotswold Motorrad right here. I'm going to go for a little spin on the BMW GS850 Adventure with a low seat. So I've already tested and got my feet down uh, quite comfortably. Uh, the balls of my feet are down comfortably. Oh, nice lights. Or DRLs. Okay, so here we are. I believe this uh, adventure model has a 23 litre fuel tank. So a uh, pretty good size. So I kind of arrived at Cotswold BMW on spec, let's say. Uh, turned up and said, anything uh, available for me to ride? I had a look around and uh, the 850GS Adventure was around. And I've not ridden any of the smaller GS models at all. First impressions are based on the riding position. It is such a comfortable riding position. Um, the handlebars feel quite close to me. I've got quite a bend in my uh, elbows. My feet have only got a very slight um, kickback from the knee down below, like five degrees or so. Now I'm used to BMWs having uh, owned a two, well, I've still got one, <laughs> the R1250R. So the switch gear is very familiar. But looking at the switch gear here, I tell you what, I might be able to bring my camera down. Not much on the right hand side. Heated grips at the top where you've got three settings, uh, riding modes and a kill and run switch SOS button, which I think may be standard nowadays, 2023, but I will double check that. On the left hand side, hopefully you can see, uh, we have cruise control at the top. Push that out, push forward, set. But what is nice is that the bike will tolerate uh, an upshift in the gearbox with the cruise control active. It won't drop it out of cruise. And we have uh, on this model dynamic ESA. So uh, that's electronically controlled, you know, semi-automatic suspension. But that's for the rear shock only. The uh, front forks are actually not adjustable. I do believe that this bike's got riding mode pro though. So uh, we do have an IMU lean sensitive at ABS and traction control. 3000 RPM fifth gear goes uphill slightly. Just wondering if it'll pull. Oh, nice. I'll come back to the engine in a bit. Now you could uh, connect the instrument panel to your phone via the BMW connected app. Unfortunately, I just tried to use the BMW Connected app on my uh, phone and it's logged itself out due to inactivity. <laughs> I've not used it in a while. Well, it has been winter. Can't remember my password, so uh, we'll have to live without that today. So I mentioned uh, the riding position is very comfortable. Now looking down, hopefully the camera will get this for you. There seems to be a lot of motorbike in front of me. <laughs> this bodywork sticks out a long way to the side. And it is rather a lot of motorbike at, I believe, 244 kilograms um, on the curb weight. It's heavier than the majority of its competition. The spec sheet's one thing. Let's see how it rides. We do have a quick shifter as well. That goes through the uh, gears quite smoothly. So what I can say is the back end in particular in, uh, in this road mode is rather soft so if you want to do a little bit more aggressive riding on the road you're gonna to have to firm that up which i will do now actually yeah that's helped a lot actually all right so i slowed down might as well put the suspension back into uh road mode hadn't i and chill out a little bit so yeah putting it in dynamic just then and uh, throwing it around a bend or two. Bike feels a lot more composed then. Uh, the back end is not um, pogoing softly as it can do on road mode if you're pushing it along a little bit. I can certainly um, see with this riding position, it's ready to do a lot of miles and I think I'll be pretty darn comfortable doing it. The only thing is um, this adventure model comes with a lower screen and I will admit to um, 
hearing and feeling a, a fair bit of turbulence, wind noise. Well, turbulence is not bad. Ow! How did that even happen? How? <laughs> you just saw me moving my hand, kind of gesticulating there, and at that moment, a stone come and hit me in the finger. Very strange. So the standard GS model comes with a taller screen. The Adventure comes with a shorter screen and it's already in its highest position. As far as I can tell, there's only two positions and it's a bit noisy. So I can only hope the standard screen, the taller one, would make it quieter, but there's no guarantee of that. Uh, what I did try just now was putting the screen in a lower position like that but for me that actually makes it noisier so I didn't keep it there for long now we've got a 21 inch front wheel here with a 90 90 21 Michelin Anarchy Adventures I think we're wearing on this bike today I think you could tell that there's a 21 inch front wheel there but um, it's doing a reasonable job of, of getting thrown into the bends when I give it a bit of opposite lock it does have a kind of a 21 inch front wheel uh, feel to it kind of takes a little while to respond but once you're in the bend feels like a regular road bike really an upright one admittedly but for those who do want to do a little bit of off-road and are prepared to handle the weight of this bike sorry it's a bit windy then the 21 inch front wheel will be great for those folks now by the time i mentioned the engine what i'm finding is at least up to about 5000 rpm because i haven't really explored the higher revs yet um, does feel smooth well not only that it's quite tractable as well so I'm doing fourth gear 30 miles an hour I'll give the front a little twist yeah and it's ready to go any lower than that I think it'll get a little bit upset with me but otherwise yeah it's uh, quite a responsive little engine so we also seem pretty well equipped at the front in terms of uh, power because we have a DIN socket there, BMW DIN socket. You can't see, my camera's gonna get, my hand's gonna get in the way. Oh, you can see that one. And this one, I think, uh, yeah, you've actually got a molded USB plug there. So you've got USB output and a DIN socket. So that's pretty good there for your gadgets. Hey, looks like we've got a bit of off-road coming up. We're off-road, we're off-road. Well, not really. Oh, that's interesting. When you stand up, because the handlebars are quite close to you sat down, they're also really quite close to you when you're stood up. Uh, nice grip for your knees on the tank. And it would feel to me as a very much an off-road noob that that would be quite controllable there. with the handlebars as close as they are and then you lean back a bit you bend your legs I think that'd be quite well set up for some off-road shenanigans so this is the, f the third bike in a uh, series of adventure style bikes I've ridden in the last week I've ridden the Moto Guzzi V85 TT and the Suzuki V-Strom 1050 DE Hopefully there'll be uh, videos up there and links up there that you can uh, take a look at. One thing I've neglected to mention with the controls uh, is that both clutch lever and brake lever are span adjustable. And you've even got adjustable gear lever and brake levers. Can't recall at the moment as I'm riding the bike now whether we've got a centre stand on board or not. Riding modes. Shall we have a little play? Well, <laughs> no, because I'm doing zero miles an hour. Or cycle through them or try to road mode then we've got uh, dynamic enduro rain 
There's your four options. Whoa! <laughs> really? <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let's put it back into road mode. Wow! The difference is stark in this first gear. Road mode, when you wind the throttle on, the application is, is very measured. But in dynamic, whoa! <laughs> What the hell? That first throttle application, it feels like the power's doubled. Alright, calm down. Cannot believe the difference between road and dynamic. There's a lot of um, extra response there. When you want to accelerate. A lot. <laughs> That's a, I wasn't expecting that at all. So suddenly, this bike, with the damping set to dynamic, and the throttle set to dynamic, I think it'd be a lot of fun. And, by the way, I really like the way the bike sounds. I'm not sure whether it's the exhaust or the airbox. I think it might be the airbox. But sounds pretty good from the rider's seat, in my opinion. Now, obviously, uh, riding one-handed is, is not really recommended. I can't condone it. And, especially in dynamic throttle mode, you've got to watch yourself. Because one bit of whiskey throttle, you could be all over the shop <laughs> being yanked backwards while the bike's accelerating like a bit of a madman. Hold on a minute. Let's see if I can get there in time. Do we not have hill hold? I'll be disappointed if we haven't got a hill hold. Uh, vehicle settings? Ooh, I suspect maybe not. Oh. Well, this bike doesn't seem to have hill hold. I hope it's an option. I love hill hold on my um, 1250R. It's a side stand. Oh, side stand's lovely and easy to get to. There's a big knob hanging out the side of it. Gets it, uh, makes it easier to reach. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's way too soft for a bike of this girth. Let's get off the bike first and double check it, shall we? Ooh. Wow, that's going a long way in. We do have a centre stand. No. Yeah. That is tricky. There we go. So yeah, that's one downside. 244 kilos, the... Uh, Claim weight there. Didn't feel heavy. Didn't feel heavy to uh, push around before I started riding. But when the bike came over a fair bit on the side stand in the mud, and I had to go back up again, and then I, I've done some experimenting, pushing down and up. Yeah, that's when you feel the weight. And perhaps you need to be a stronger person than I to uh, manage one of these things. Suddenly it can feel every kilo of that uh, 244 kilos uh, claim weight. So um, I've gone into the configurator online. <laughs> I've added, I think, what are most of the packs that this bike's got. Because I think you've got things like comfort pack, dynamic pack, touring pack. We're up to somewhere in the region of 14.5k UK. It's a fair bit of money. But you have got a lot of equipment um, on the motorbike. So yeah, four stroke, parallel twin, four valves per cylinder, double overhead cam. Um, how much power did I say? 95 horsepower, 8,250 RPM. And the torque, 92 newton meters at 6,250 RPM. That's, that's fairly high, but it does feel very responsive especially now i've put the throttle in dynamic mode very responsive <laughs> like 
seriously. Um, it's quite pokey. So for you touring types out there, you saw the, the two sockets out there on the dashboard. The alternator outputs 416 watts. I know that's important for people who like to plug in their heated gear, sat navs, radar detectors, etc. There's quite a lot of lighting going on there. I do love LED lights. Decent sized rear light, I think. It's all good. You can see on the uh, display there, you can see it's quite washed out in the sun. And that's because I think, um, I think they're called Speedo Angels. The protective uh, covering that you can buy for BMW screens and other models. But I'm not a fan. When the sun's hitting these displays from behind, you can just see that is just really washed out and kind of pink looking. I just don't like this washed out effect that these um, protective coatings uh, add to the display. One thing to be aware of, and I keep forgetting even though I own a BMW, is when you change the rider modes from road to uh, dynamic, if you've got ESA suspension, this might not be true for every BMW model, but certainly for this one, and my BMW R1250R that when you change the riding modes it changes the ESA suspension mode as well so if you were in road riding mode and road suspension then you put the bike in dynamic riding mode it also changes the damping to dynamic as well and vice versa I don't know maybe there could be a switch that enables um, you to change the riding mode without changing the, without changing the suspension mode because that's how I prefer it to be to be honest with you I do change riding mode every so often on my bike but I don't want the suspension mode to change unless I choose it but still as long as you're aware and I've just made you aware if you were aware and here in the urban jungle <laughs> with uh, potholes and speed bumps that's where the 21 inch front wheel does actually help along with the softer rear suspension in the road damping mode it's just mopping this stuff up it's just a kind of a soft wafty sensation <laughs> it's not going upset at all but before you ask well you might have already asked um, I have not ridden any recent KTMs uh, aside from a brief spin on a Super Adventure S 1290 a couple of years ago so I can't compare this to uh, contemporary KTMs I'm afraid hopefully I'll get to ride KTMs one day now so far it's not feeling snatchy but it just feels very urgent <laughs> I'm responsive. Don't look. This bike does not hang about. Wow. <laughs> now the engine did get a little bit tingly at higher revs, but I've not been able to sustain higher revs for any length of time. So the jaw is still out on that. I am liking this bike, or to put it more precisely, I am liking, well, it's a bike. I'm liking the engine more in dynamic mode, and I like that the fact that the chassis is handling the kind of the extra response and performance I'm getting. Now, would I want to take it off road? Not without someone with me. It's just, it's too heavy, too heavy for me to risk riding alone off-road but with a couple of friends we can help each other if you get a little bit stuck in the mud <laughs> then why not while it's not really you know designed to be a road bike especially in this configuration I'm finding it to be a fun road bike <laughs> and uh, yeah the big front wheel and the soft road damping works to its advantage um, on UK roads.
Oh, yeah, I can tell you uh, the clutch isn't heavy. I think you'll be okay in stop-start traffic, but it isn't light. It's not uh, a featherweight clutch for certain. Responds well at the old uh, motorway speeds for overtaking. Just a tad noisy. But if I dip my head a little bit, it does get a bit quieter. Not bad. Feels very comfortable and it's certainly not going to get very affected by the wind. <laughs> not with the all up weight of this machine. Yeah, even um, on the motorway here, uh, motorway speeds, the difference between um, road and dynamic in the throttle response is big. This bike has surprised the hell out of me. <laughs> in road mode, with road throttle response and road damping, um, the bike was behaving kind of like I anticipated it would. Overall, basically. I didn't think there'd be much more to come out of the performance. But, dynamic mode, it's like a different bike. My brake's smoking. Yes. I have to admit I've not ridden, I don't think I have anyway, the F900R, F900XR, you know, that parallel twin range either. So I suppose I didn't know really what to expect from the engine. But my preconceptions have been poof, blown into smithereens. Yeah, if like me, you perhaps thought that the 850 GS was a bit of a plodder, wasn't very exciting perhaps, compared to what you've heard about in terms of the, you know, the KTMs of this world. Well, I think this bike is worth considering. I've got to admit though, I haven't ridden a KTM, uh, an 890 or a 790, but this is, uh, it's, it performs, it does perform, regardless of what I've ridden otherwise. <laughs> it performs well, handles well, if you spend enough money, it's got all the toys you, you would conceivably ever need on a bike. Consider me impressed. We got a three years warranty on the bike as well. So that's uh, worth noting. I've just noticed then when you slow down, you can actually hear uh, burbles coming out through the exhaust. So if this bike had a, a fruitier silencer, it'd be, sound, it'd be sounding pretty fit. The back brake, by the way, feels about as effective as the front brake. Well, it's got a similar feel, sorry. Not as strong, because back brakes typically aren't. But it's also um, soft on the initial application. But it does get stronger the more you push. Let's see what it's like for getting on the centre stand. <clears throat> you know what? <laughs> as much as I do like this bike, I think it's too heavy for me. Getting on the stand took quite an effort. And making sure the bike was upright before I did it, that also took quite an effort. Wow, that bike is imposing looking from the back. <laughs> Jesus, you're a serious bit of kit. The funny thing is, if you took all that bodywork off, if you stripped it, it'd probably look quite dainty. Right, so let's get it off the stand again. I'm not nervous, you're nervous. It's a bit much for these weedy arms, I'll tell you. So let me know in the comments what you think about this machine, if you've ridden one, if you own one, if you're shopping for one, if there's other bikes on the shopping list, let me know what you're thinking about. But otherwise, I'd just like to thank again uh, BMW Cotswold Motorrad for letting me take out this bike for a quick spin. 
been thoroughly enjoyable better than I could have uh, imagined okay and we're back so I hope you've enjoyed my little uh, review video folks if you have if you've enjoyed this video and if you've watched other videos of mine please do consider subscribing think about it before you go to bed <laughs> so there we are so uh, until the next video folks take care of yourselves see you soon ta-da yeah somehow that 850gs has made my bike feel small that's something I really do appreciate that GS for. Thank you very much. <laughs>